Ahoy hoy, welcome back to my channel. Um, for once, I don't have an update about being sick. Although my asthma is still acting up. <laughs> so, just to put it out there, you're going to hear me cough at times, although it's not so much. If it is, I apologize in advance. Today, though, I want to talk about something that I normally don't talk about on my channel. I normally don't cover politics and controversies and stuff, because that's not what my channel is about. I may pay attention to politics in my personal life, but I don't use my YouTube channel to do that, because I feel like I need to keep the two separate. But sometimes it's just too hard to ignore. And what I want to talk about today is about the baby formula shortage in the U.S. Um... Not so much the issue itself, um, because I'm a little sketchy on the details of why there is one. I've heard some stuff, but I'm not sure how true it is. And I won't go into the politics of what we should do and what we shouldn't do. But I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is that the breastfeeding and bottle feeding debate is picking up again because of the, the formula shortage. And... My stance is, I'm pro-feeding your baby however the hell you want to, regardless if it's breastfeeding, bottle feeding, or both. As long as a kid is being fed, that's all that matters. Let alone, as long as they're not being abused and neglected, that's also all that matters. Um... <coughs> I mean, while my children are seven and nine now, and I haven't nursed and bottle fed in years, I have a niece in the U.S. that is, let me think, she's, I think, she might be six months old now. Let's see. December, January, February, March, April. Yeah, she's six months now. I have a niece in the U.S. that is six months old, and she bottle feeds, but her mom breastfeeds her. This is my brother's baby. I know I haven't mentioned her much on my channel, but, you know, it's my brother's kid, and I feel like a parent should get permission first to talk about someone else's kid, but I feel like in this situation, it's warranted. I'm not going to mention her name, but honestly, it's none of your business. Um, but yeah, my niece bottle and breastfeeds. She has, she uses formula, especially because she was born five weeks early. She was supposed to be born in December and she ended up being born in mid-November. And... The thought of anyone getting on my sister-in-law and my brother about formula feeding my niece pisses me off. As far as I know, they haven't heard anything from anybody, but I read stories already about how some people who bottle feed their babies, some of them breastfeeding them too, are getting harped upon by people who are extremely pro-breastfeeding. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of benefits in breastfeeding. But I think these people don't realize that not everybody is lucky like them, where you can breastfeed your baby with no problems. That's not the reality for some of us, though. I bottled and breastfed both my kids. Let me rephrase that. I did that successfully with one child. And I couldn't get my daughter to bottle feed. And I know what's probably going on right now. You, there's probably people who's watching this who's extremely pro breastfeeding and they're going, Woohoo! Yes! She didn't bottle feed. Yeah. But maybe you should hear the story first before you celebrate. And still want to celebrate after you hear what I have to say. I 
I learned when I, when my son was two weeks old, because my son's older than my daughter, that I didn't produce enough fat in my breast milk. In other words, my kids cannot gain weight off of my breast milk alone. In Sweden, at least, um, the appointments to the doctor seem a little bit weekly. So my son was was weighed when he was a week old. And then when he was two weeks old, there was no weight gain. There wasn't any weight loss either, but there wasn't any weight gain. And this made the pediatrician nervous because babies are supposed to gain weight. And she's like, okay, bottle feed, but you can also breastfeed too. I want you to bottle feed to get him to help gain weight. But you can still breastfeed, you know, just to keep some of the health benefits up as well as trade bond, that kind of thing. And the one thing I like about raising my kids in Sweden, and yes, they are youth assistants too, is that I have found that people here do not judge you if you bottle or breastfeed. It's pretty chill. I didn't get hopped upon when I breastfed my kids. And I didn't get hopped upon when I bottle fed my son. Or let alone try to bottle feed my daughter. Um, and the pediatricians here do encourage both methods. Especially if you're having trouble, in my case, breastfeeding. Because my kid wasn't gaining. So my son thrived on both breastfeeding and bottle feeding. And he weaned off breastfeeding when he was seven months old. Because now he had formula and then he had soft foods. Of course, from the baby jars. My daughter, on the other hand, was different. It's, it still hurts to talk about to this day. But my daughter, in the first two years of her life, was a struggle to get her to gain weight. It was. She did not take the bottle feeding, as I mentioned. But because she did that, she relied solely on breastfeeding. And of course, since there's no fat in my milk to make her gain, she didn't gain much. If that wasn't bad enough, I had a theory. I, I stress theory. <laughs> that the reason why she didn't bottle feed is because she didn't want to put the bottle, the nipple, in her mouth. And I began to realize that she had a fear of doing that. Because it wasn't just with the bottle. When she started, when she was four months old, which you can start eating some solid foods, we struggled to feed her, too, because she did not want to put the spoon in her mouth. And I mentioned that to the pediatricians, that I thought that maybe a fear had developed. I mean, I know there's debate about how much a baby remembers from being in the womb, but from what I know, in like the late term, babies start learning how to swallow when they're still when they're still in the womb. <coughs> they do this. They they swallow the amount of fluid as a way to practice eating when they get out of the womb. <coughs> and while I think this is more of an issue close to birth, uh, they also defecate and pee when they're in the womb. So when they're, you know, eating the, or swallowing the amount of fluid, um, some nasty stuff is getting ingested. And one thing that is a risk that I heard is that sometimes 
when they're, I don't know if it's exactly when they're about to be born or if it's like close to birth, but sometimes they can swallow their own crap and that can get lodged in their throats and they can choke on it. Now, Lucy, I think this usually happens mostly at birth, so like there's enough time to clear the airways when they're born. But I don't, that did not happen to my daughter, at least. But what I did think happened was that did happen to her, but while she briefly choked on it or had issues with it, she it was enough to get it dislodged because when she was born, there was no problems. But I always wonder if a fear developed because of that, and she did remember that somehow. But it's a theory. I'm going to stress this out. It's a theory. It's not a fact. It's a theory. That that happened to her. Due to her not wanting to put a spoon in her mouth or bottle feed. But because she did this, she had trouble gaining weight. And when you have a baby that is having trouble gaining weight, and it continues until they're two years old. People will judge the shit out of you because suddenly they think you're starving your kid. So those of you who are pro breastfeeding, who probably celebrated when you heard my daughter didn't bottle feed, how do you feel about feel now hearing that to bit? Are you still celebrating? Because not every kid can breastfeed well. Not every single mother can produce enough breast milk. Not every single mother can produce enough fat in her milk, which was my case. Not every single woman can pump. Again, my case. And also... What about people who are adopted parents and foster parents? How the hell are they supposed to breastfeed? The only thing they can do is formula feed. So, don't get me wrong, I understand the health benefits behind breastfeeding. But you guys have to understand that Not everybody wants to breastfeed or can breastfeed without issues. So, just think about that next time you hear someone from a feed. That they might be a mother who's also breastfeeding who can't breastfeed their kid well. And they rely on their formula to help them gain weight. Or to actually eat. Because let me tell you guys something. I would have been so happy. So happy. If my daughter did bottle feed too. That would have taken so much stress off of me. Rather than stress me out. And I mean, again, that could have had an issue with my breast milk too. Because I was worried about her gaining. Only for her not to gain. And she's struggled with her weight for the longest time. It's only been recently that she's she's at where she needs to be at. So yeah. You know? If you had no complications with bottle feeding or breastfeeding, great. But keep in mind, not every single child out there is lucky. Alright? And you got to consider, too, that some babies might already have a disorder going on at that point. My daughter suspected of having autism. And if you know anything about autism, there are sensory issues, like someone being too sensitive to certain light or um, sights, I should say. Someone being too sensitive to certain sounds. Someone being too sensitive to certain smells and feelings and taste and textures in your mouths. 
I mean, I know when Tess was like two, three years old, one of the, um, I think she was a, some sort of therapist or some sort, um, had her eat on camera. And we had a lot of food, but she ate very little. But even the little amount of food she ate, the, um, therapist or whatever noticed how, how she'd take tiny bits of food and then it would get bigger and bigger until she'd nearly choke. And she hasn't done that since then. Um, but she realized that she had a, a, uh, sensitivity of putting things in her mouth. So, and I mean, I can testify to some stuff. I mean, I do have a disorder that mimics some stuff of autism. I mean, I'm sensitive to certain textures and tastes and smells and sounds. I'm not sure about sights, except maybe certain colors and stuff. But, yeah, that could be an issue too. You could have a child that is on the spectrum, even if you don't know it yet. They could have trouble eating. So, what I'm trying to say is stop being judgmental about how people feed their kids. Because you don't know the struggles they're going through. And I hope for the babies in the U.S., you know, they get enough formula soon. And I know people don't know who my niece is. But do not mess with my sister-in-law and my brother for formula feeding their daughter as well as breastfeeding her. Just don't. Okay? Alright, that's what I really wanted to cover today. Alright. <coughs> oh, I went 17 minutes before I started coughing up a lung. I'm getting a little bit better. Well, if you like this video, smash like the like button. If you subscribe, I'll be absolutely happy. Um, don't hesitate to leave a comment, even if you disagree with me. I'll talk to you about it and whatnot. I just want people to be less judgmental about what others do, because you don't know if there's any struggle going on, or if the baby has anything that causes them to be like that. That's all I'm saying. I find nothing wrong with either method, especially since I did both methods. So, yeah. All right. That's about it. Toodles.